Hello everybody, welcome to the second part of our ease of movement calculation. In this video we're going to be actually uh, calculating ease of movement in Python. Uh, one thing that you're going to need real quick, uh, actually two things, you'll want the sample data. The link for that is in the description. You should be taken to this page and there's sample data here. And then also we're going to be using a simple moving average. We do actually have a tutorial video out on simple moving average. So either check that out or you can just come to the sample code uh, with the empty slot. Might as well leave this page open if you plan to follow to the next video. But also for now, we're just going to copy and paste uh, this moving average definition right here for the function. So just copy that, move it over here, um, come down a little bit and paste that function. Also make sure you save the sample data to a text file in the same directory as your script. I call it sample data.txt. So now we're going to need to do a few things. If you have been following along, just copy and paste and let me get through this real quick. Otherwise, uh, follow along. Hopefully you can type pretty quick. Otherwise, pause the video and uh, catch up. So what we're going to need is we're going to import numpy as an MP. We're going to import time. Then we're going to have a variable called sample data. <clears throat> sample data is going to equal open uh, sample data.txt, whatever you save that data as, with the intention to read. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and read it into memory. Then we're going to have split data, and that's going to equal sample data dot split by a new line. Next, uh, we're going to define all the variables of sample data. So that's going to be date, close, p, high, p, low, p, open, p, and volume equals numpy or mp dot load txt. What text file do we want to load? Well, it's not really a file. It's what's in memory, but split data with the delimiter of a comma. And finally, unpack equals true. Uh, so we can unpack it into those variables. Now, uh, that's that. Uh, let's actually clear that space. I uh, that I made that space. And let's make some space down here. And now what we're going to go ahead and do is define env. That's going to be our function. And we're going to allow it, and we're just going to make it so we can pass through all of those variables at once. So it's going to be d, c, h, l, o, v, and then time frame for the time frame of our env. Next, um, if you've been following along, you should recognize this should be pretty familiar. x equals 1. <laughs> uh, also, we're going to have a variable called 1. Uh, 1p emv, and it's going to be an empty array for now, or empty list rather. Then we're going to go ahead and say while x is less than the length of any of these variables, really, uh, we're just going to say close. And uh, we're going to do the following. Movement equals, and that, here's where we're going to use that um, calculation that we did in the video. So it's, it's the high plus the low divided by 2, but it's that current high, right? So for that reason, we really need to do um, hx plus lx. And then this needs to be in parentheses, so we can divide them by 2, divided by 2. And then really, that needs to be in parentheses as well. Uh, then that is, uh, we subtract from that the old high, right? the previous high plus the previous low, so hx minus 1 minus uh, or actually, sorry, plus LX minus 1. And don't forget to close that right there. And really, this needs to be in parentheses. Then it's divided by 2. So again, needs to be in parentheses. So we'll throw those around there. And that's uh, that. Now, uh, let me think here. Uh, should This should close off that one. And so just to be, you know, saying, let's just throw a couple more parentheses here. You can never have too many parentheses. It's like commas in grammar, you know, you might as well just throw them in there. Next, um, you have this thing called like the box rate. Basically, that's just like um, the volume to price ratio, pretty much. So we've got box R is what we're going to call it. And that is going to be the volume at the X variable divided by whatever number you choose. In our case, we're just going to use 1 million. And add the point zero zero so it treats it as a float, so uh, it works like we would expect division to work. And then we're going to do some more division. And so this needs to be in parentheses. So like all of this is what gets divided, right? Divided by the high of you know the current high minus the uh, current low, like that. 
So now what we'll do is we'll throw these into uh, brackets, and then finally, as we said before, it's like commas, just you know, toss them around. And now we've got our box R, our box rate. Now what we want to do is we want to say uh, 1P EMVs, so 1 period EMV equals now movement divided by this box R. Since that's where really what the uh, equation is trying to do. It's trying to divide this whole thing by this whole thing. Now just so we can decide whether or not we're happy with that number, let's go ahead and just print that out so we can just see it with our eyeballs and see if that looks, you know, legitimate. So it's just printing out like a 15 billion every time or something we know something is wrong. Then we're going to do x plus equals 1. Next, uh, let's scroll down a little bit. And now what we want to do is we're going to say time frame of the EMV. So once you get the EMV, generally you when you want to like you know smooth or like add a time frame and then uh, of a simple moving average to it. Otherwise, it's going to look kind of silly. So most of the time, uh, people are going to use a 14. We haven't really called it, but that's what our TF is for. So since we called this function here moving average, right? So we can say TF EMV equals moving average of, and we really want to have the moving average of this 1p mv, and for whatever the time frame is, so this is values here, and then the window of the simple moving average. Finally, let's print the length of the tf emv, print len of d, so date tf colon, so hopefully those are two equal numbers, and then this function needs to return d tf colon, and then tf emv. Finally, we actually need to call this bad boy. It was EMV and then all the little things. Um, all of these are the variables, plus 14 basically. So we'll just copy that, paste that in there, do a 14, all set. Save that, run it, see what we get. And we got a trace back here. V cannot be empty. And TF, EMV, we call it TF. I'm honestly not sure because it ran the function and it's spitting out uh, the actual numbers. I'm sure this is like really obvious. It says V. I'm looking at V. We did throw in a value for V. D, C, H, L, O, E, F. We do have volume. V, X. Well, this is a bummer. I'm trying to figure out where we possibly went wrong here. It's just weird because it gets all the way down to this point where it can like print out all this stuff. So that's what makes it difficult is really it would have screwed up like here before it printed out the lengths. We are doing our x plus equals 1. Hmm. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause this for a second and see if I can't figure it out. Because I'm staring at this and I don't really see it. It's throwing back at me a couple of different, like here's the, the function it's throwing back at me. And then it's throwing back this for the moving average. And then it's raising the value error of V can't be empty. I'm not really sure what V has anything to do with TF EMV. So anyway, just a second. Okay, so at least one of the issues for sure um, is that we never actually appended 1p EMVs to 1p EMV, right? So we need to do 1p EMV dot append 1p EMVs, and then we run x plus equals 1, and now this whole thing ought to really work. Uh, so let's see. And let's go ahead and let's see, 92, 92, that should be it. Now let's go ahead and actually print again 1P EMVs and see what we get. Okay, so now uh, that should be it. So we just didn't append the 1P EMVs uh, or the 1P EMVs to 1P EMV. That's not confusing. 
Anyways, so it looks like that we actually got the correct calculations now, and so now what we actually want to do is add it to our charting application. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. So stay tuned for that. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for the support and subscriptions, and until next time.